I'm Sarah Woodbury, and I'm here today to talk about my new book, The Faithless Fool. The Faithless Fool is the 14th Gareth and Gwen Medieval Mystery. Gareth and Gwen and their friends and family have traveled to Scotland at the invitation of David, the King of Scots, to witness the knighting of Prince Henry, who is Empress Maud's son, at the age of 16. This occurred on May 22nd, uh, 1249, and it is an actual historical event. As soon as I discovered that, I knew that I had to write a story and write a mystery around this particular event. So what I'm going to do today is a little bit different from what I've done in the past in that I'm going to read you the first chapter of the book. I am not Tom Mumford, my lovely Welsh narrator, but I will do my best. Chapter 1, Carlisle Castle, the 22nd of May, 1149. Day 1, Gareth. King David of Scotland placed a naked blade on the shoulder of his great nephew, Prince Henry, who was kneeling at his feet, and recited the words of chivalry in a commanding voice that carried throughout the hall. Au nom de Dieu, je te fais chevalier. Be thou a knight in the name of God. Then he stepped back and made a motion with his hand. Avance, chevalier. Arise, knight. As Prince Henry rose to his feet, stamping, shouts, and applause filled the hall. Henry was 16 years old, exactly halfway in age between Gareth's boys, Di and Sheila, who were 15 and 17, respectively. Both sons had stopped cold at the sight of the prince receiving his knighthood from the King of Scots. Envy was plain in their faces, prompting Gareth to put a hand on a shoulder of each. Your time will come, never fear. The prince is young to be knighted, but he is also a prince and may one day be King of England. Do not begrudge him his day of glory. He paused a beat before adding in a low voice, still in Welsh and for their ears alone, the next one may be a long time coming. The arrival of the Welsh party had been delayed, thankfully not by a storm in the Irish Sea, but by the slowness of their journey through the estuary at the mouth of the River Eden and then up the Eden to Carlisle Castle. With all the rain they'd been getting, a continuance of the rains of the winter, the river was running high and fast, so they'd been rowing upstream against a heavy current. At times, walking would have been faster, except they hadn't wanted to stop along the way. Although this area of Scotland had once been Norse and British before that, now it was populated by people who cursed the sight of a Viking longship, and not without reason given the centuries of Danish conquest and warfare. That the ship flew the white flag of peace and was helmed by none other than the mighty Godfred, Prince of Dublin, was beside the point. The people on shore didn't know who he was, nor that he had Connell of Leinster and Gareth of Gwynedd beside him. They saw only the round shields of Vikings hung on the sides of the ship and armed men at the oars. Still, none of the locals had attempted to stop them, not only because a second look had reminded them of the folly of taking on Danish warriors, but also because the ship carried women and children, Gareth's wife Gwen and their children, of course, and also Katrina, Godfrey's wife and Connell's sister. Thus, they had reached Carlisle in one piece, found their lodgings at the cathedral guesthouse in the town, and then hastened to the castle. As it turned out, their timing had been perfect, and they'd entered King David's majestic hall just in time to witness his bestowal of knighthood on Henry. Having received a hug from his uncle and general congratulations from the other noblemen in his vicinity, Henry descended from the dais and made a beeline towards the Welsh party. Then, to Gareth's utter surprise, Henry didn't stop a respectful distance away, but walked right up to him and embraced him. I'm so glad you are here. Pulling back, he seemed to realize that the hug had perhaps been slightly beneath his dignity. Clearing his throat, he added, Welcome to Carlisle. Thank you. Gareth bowed gravely back. Were you in time? Henry accepted everyone's else obeisance and then raised them up with an impatient gesture. Did you see? We did, my lord, Gareth said. Congratulations. The honor is most deserved. Henry made a face, again revealing himself to be 16 and, in truth, no more or less mature than Gareth's own sons. I am not a child begging for a sweet. 
I would not besmirch my uncle's action by suggesting that I am undeserving of the honor. But we all know that I have led few men in battle up until now, and those with little success. I think you underestimate. What did I just say? Henry cut off Gareth with another gesture. Gareth bent his head respectfully. Of course, my lord. Then again, now that you're here, Henry rubbed his hands together. The task of taking back my mother's throne can begin in earnest. So I hope you've all enjoyed this little bit of The Faithless Fool, and I hope that you are looking forward to its arrival on July 25th, 2021 at all retailers worldwide. Thanks for watching my video. You can click on the playlist or subscribe to my channel to see more. There'll be a new video next week. If you want to check out my books, click on the link to my webpage.